okay, well, why- had, uh, when I shaved my head, it was it was a bit nostalgic because I, I looked in the mirror and then I remembered like everything. Like it, it was so weird, right? It was yeah. so like it, it was like it brought me back to my old self. And, and I remember like the mindset. And then you start thinking about, whoa, the growth, right? Like, you know, uh, 20 years ago, uh, you know, and I showed you that TikTok of me 20 years ago mm-hmm. and, you know, what I was like. And, you know, it, it's funny because you don't even notice yourself. You don't even know, like, it's like little things that you do uh, every day that add up at the end of the day. Right. And and what happens is you don't notice you like if you go to the gym today every single day, you won't you might not notice, uh, you know, you might not notice all the the results and all the the growth and all the, you know, the, you know, the, the healthy body and everything. But then you, you go back, if you do that consistently for two years, you can look back and say, whoa, look where I was two years ago. Right. So it's, it's really it's really crazy from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, g- glad to have you on the show. And, uh, you know, obviously we had you on last year and so much growth for you, maybe not in hair, but, uh, <laughs> but, but we're, ha- we're glad to have you on here. And, um, and so, you, you know, you're, you're a real estate investor, you've had a clothing company, you've, you, you know, you had your first child really young. I mean, there's a lot of different parts that we're going to get into. Um, and you've been around and stood the test of time, so to say. And so I think there's a lot of value that we can get from, from uh, hearing your story. So uh, let, let's, let's just start into it a little bit about, um, you know, now you're this massive real estate investor and public speaker that, okay, maybe COVID doesn't allow you to go out and speak as often as you did previously, but but now we're uh, doing it virtually. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now anybody can can yeah, see. Yeah. Now, right? now we're now we're connecting with more people. You yeah. Know, than we ever have before using the technology, the access to technology that we have. Yeah. And so where where are you connecting with people the most right now? I would have to say I would have to say through social media, right? So. You know, yeah. I was not I was, you know, I was doing my social media thing uh, before COVID, but I've um, 10 X it for sure. Um, the just the 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 everyday posting the you, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm on live right now. People are watching me right now. I, I there's people on here. There's uh, actually like four people on my live right now. Yeah. I've just been more uh, more present in my social media. I used to look at it like um like a chore, you know, okay. but now I've really taken it. Uh, I've really taken it as a vehicle to connect to with more and more and more people. Obviously, yeah. uh, every time I do a podcast with someone, someone like you, uh, I get to connect with their audience. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's, I mean, I've never done as many podcasts <laughs> as I've done in the past year. Right. So yeah. it, it definitely the reach is is, is more right than ever before yeah yeah um wow okay um and that and that makes sense because you know so many people are on social media even more so than they were a year ago or the year before that like because we've been in covid lockdown so many people have been forced to get their social connection through social media and so even people that that didn't like it before hey what what are you gonna do yeah, I think you know the there's 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 this idea that uh, we're losing that social aspect because of COVID, right? Like yeah. we're losing the the human to human interaction, and I think it I think it's the opposite. You see, like we met during COVID, like we met yeah. on like we met um, on Zoom. And we, yeah. like we read, uh, you, you, you invited me to your show and then we did the show it was on zoom. Then yeah. we had multiple different uh, interactions and we did multiple different zooms. We wouldn't, yeah. would have never done that if it was real life. Yeah. And so uh, as a result, when we actually did meet each other uh, physically, the hug was stronger. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's so true. We, I think we're more social now 
than yeah. ever before. I think, you know, and we're more present. I think we're because it's like it was new and everybody it's like, you know, people are doing Zooms with their families more than they saw their families before. Mm, yeah. Well, I think the interaction increased because of this technology. So you see, there's always a silver, silver line, a silver lining, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's true. Actually, um, we are spending more time with family than we ever did before, just by bringing the laptop and bringing it to the dinner table and contacting my sister and her family, and uh, we're having we're having supper together. Yeah, we, you we, know, we, and, we, just we as chaotic. Yeah. And we had the technology before, which is funny yeah. to do yeah. that, but we never did. Right. Like we never utilized right. that technology in order to to make connections. Like if we were back in the you know early 1900s, you know, with the Spanish flu, you know, it was difficult. I mean, you, you would literally not be able to have any contact with your family. Right. And people mm -hmm. went into isolation and, and, you know, it was, it, you know, they, they were there was quarantining like it, there was some similar aspects to uh, what we're going through now uh, versus, uh, you know, the Spanish flu. But now we have technology. Right. And with technology right now, I am in uh, Saskatoon. Right. Uh, I know that 11 at 11, I had to meet you. Right. Uh, yeah. And I can jump on here, right. interact with you. And, you know, we're in different time zones. Uh, we're completely at the other end of the, I'm at the other end of the country, but we can still connect. I can see you. I mean, there's something very uh, disconnecting about te a telephone conversation, right? Yeah. Um, but now it's, you know, it's, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, le let me ask, uh, let me ask you this, because now that we have all of this access um, and I think for us, it's definitely allowing us to connect more than ever before. But I, what I'm hearing is a sentiment that uh, for younger people, they they're feeling disconnected, um, even though they would be more familiar with with social media. Can you say something about that? Yeah, so I don't I don't have much. Obviously, I can only uh, go on my my own experience. Uh, last year, March. Um, so my 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 youngest daughter, my my youngest daughter is going into high school, and um, tw uh, September of last year, this is her this would be her first year of high school. Um, and then we we had you know obviously March came about and we had all the COVID and things were shut down, schools were shut down, and she 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 said, Dad, I want to I want to do school online. I said, yeah, you, you're going to have to. No, she said, no, indefinitely. Like, I, I want to do it like my whole high school online. Mm -hmm. Now, in my mind, I thought like, Phew, what about the social aspect that she's going to be missing out? But I started thinking about, about like what high school meant to me. And, you know, I'm just looking at her situation from my perspective. I'm not even taking her perspective into consideration. This is something that she wanted to do. And, and so I said, okay, let's, let, let, let's go for it. And the result was her marks got better. She, I mean, think about uh, school, for example. The, they go to school, kids are going to school now, uh, nine to three, five days a week, okay? That's the average school uh, time. Some, some are like eight to two or whatever. But like, how much of that school, time at school is actually learning mm -hmm. and how much of it is wasting time, like just filling in the time. Right. And the, what we realized with COVID is that the, the, the system is, it's an outdated system that has, hasn't caught up to our live, our live today. Right. And, and so what happens, what happens for, for, for younger people, that's my, from my, my perspective, is that they can be more connected online. Now, there is some young people like myself, I would have to say I would, I would fall into that group where I would feel a little bit lost just because I feel, and, and um, this is just the way I'm, I'm, picture, I'm putting myself into 
you know, a 15 year old's shoes. Right. I didn't do good in school while I was going to school. I don't think I would have the discipline to be able to do school online. So it, I don't think it's one size fits all. But I think we should move into a different way of living that is more suitable to lifestyle so people can have a better lifestyle. You know, is it is it important to go to, to work nine to five? Right. So that is changing. Right. We, we realize that with COVID nine to five is no longer nine to five, seven days a week. That's a whole that, that, that yeah. we're moving away from that as a result of COVID. And so if the kids are in school, because before they were in school, nine to three in training. So they get used to going to an institution for, for, for a certain amount of time. So they would go nine to three when they get out, they would get out in the real world is nine to five. Right. But this is not the, the world that they're going to be going into. Like we, we know that already. Mm-hmm. We know that the world, the, the world of, uh, of uh, earning an income is going to change mm-hmm. going to morph. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to look like. Would you go, would you go to, uh, to school now, university or college? If you were, if you were back again, would you go to university or college now? I would not. I would not. I would not. I didn't go to the first time. <laughs> well, I, didn't go, I didn't go the first time, but would, but I, would I, you I, tell, I, would you tell kids to, to go to university or college now? It really depends on the individual. So I'll give you an example. Um, I had a, uh, you know, people reach out because of my, my presence on YouTube and, you know, people reach out all the time through social media and, you know, you know, they're like, can we, can we connect? I said, let's jump on a zoom. I don't know who I'm talking. like, I really can't see the picture. I don't look through their profile. I just, you know, I just end up on the, on the zoom call. And then often I'll see a young person, you know, a young person on the other side, it's like, oh, like, it's kind of young, you know, like he wants to know about real estate. I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what, where, where he's at. And so I get a lot of young people and they're like, Alfonso, I watch you every day. You're an entrepreneur. And so there was this, there's this young person. We'll keep out his name, <clears throat> but uh, he's, you know, uh, he, he's in university, you know, and he's like, Alfonso, I watch you every day. I want to be in real estate. And um, uh I guess if I say it, if I say what, what it is, he, he's going to know, but it's all right. I, he, he, he'll know. Uh, he's an aerospace engineer. <laughs> Third year, one year to go. Right. And he's, and he asked me the question, you know, I want to be a real estate uh, entrepreneur. I won't, should I quit school and just do that? You know, because I don't like what I'm doing. And so my, my, my response was, instant i'm like don't you dare right you got one year to go i mean if you were at the starting line and you say i want to uh, be an aer- aerospace engineer um and you ask me that question and i would say are you interested in that and you would say no i would say well probably it's not the best way to go but you already did three years the market value of a human being will be more in the world if they have a degree right and so if you're doing nothing, it's not, you know, I don't, and this is what I told my own daughter, like, if you have nothing to do, go to school. If you're, if it's, if it's, if the education you're getting is specific to, uh, to what the career is going to be, go to school. If you, if you're going to uh, wander around the world, okay, that's good. Get some life experience, but go come back and work and do something. Right. Like, do, don't just do it, don't do anything. Right. You have to have a plan. Is it is it because you want them to have a fallback in case uh, real estate doesn't work for them? No, not, not necessarily. I mean, you, you even 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 in a, in a situation where you're having uh, a dinner party with other high level, high, high level investors, high net worth investors and. You, you, you just happen to drop that you have a degree. <laughs> You're an engineer, you know, your, your market value is, it, it, it automatically goes up, right? But you shouldn't be going to school for that market value is what I'm saying. But if, if you already did the three years and you have one year to go, suck it up, 
right? Suck it up, get it done, and then go and do whatever it is that you want to do with your life, right? Yeah. Now, the the having a backup plan, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a big believer in that. It's either you go to school for, for a reason. I don't think kids should go to school just to play around and, and go to frosh week or whatever, which is w- primarily what young people want to do, right? Um, there is value in education. There's lots of value in education. But it's, it, I think it's, um, it should be an individual journey for, for everyone, starting in elementary, right? Because what happens is in school, they're, they're prepping you. They're, you're, you're getting prepped to, you know, you're going to go to your college univers- university, then you're going to get yourself a job. And for, I think, the majority of people, that's a good path. But there's going to be individuals that don't fit in that mold. They don't fit in, the, in that journey. And there's no alternate journey for that, for that individual. And that's why I started the Quadra Youth Foundation, is just to give an insight to young people on what else is out there for them, right? Can they, can they start a business at 17? Absolutely. I did. Right. I started a business at 17. Can they own real estate at 17? Absolutely. Right. Can they have a career and own real estate? Absolutely. Right. Can they should they go university? Depends on the individual. Right. If if it fits where they're if it fits the goals and where they're going. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, the problem is where people get disconnected is that there's no alternate path. Right. It's not like, you know, it's not like, OK, you take this other path of, you know, uh, being creative. Right. And that path, it, it leads you to podcasting. It could lead you to, um, it, it, you know, uh, drawing fashion, uh, music. It's an alternate path. And that path of being creative, in essence, are, are skill sets that you need in, in order to become an entrepreneur. And so that path could be clear and they could be like, Okay, you, you start working at a company as an intern, and then you're, you get set up, you do a business plan, and you can start your own, your own company. Like there's, there's no clear path for someone that wants to take action right away versus someone that is willing to wait all the way up until 25 uh, to start uh, earning income, you know, which mm-hmm. ultimately, if you go to university and you can, and you just take, if you were to take the meat and potatoes, of four years of the things that you're actually going to learn in, in, in your in university, getting your university degree, you take the meat and potatoes. I, I'm sure it wouldn't even be six months, right? Of the real hardcore, like meat and potatoes of what you actually need. The rest is just filling in time, right? Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say that there's probably a lot of that in, in uh, college and university where you're filling in because, so many youth are going to these institutions to try to figure out what they want to do as opposed to, Hey, this is, this is what I want to do. So uh, a lot of the the schools have had to give sort of a smorgasbord, like a buffet, you know, choose, here's a, here's a whole bunch of choices and choose what it is that you you're like almost like uh, those books back in the day. Choose your own adventure. Um, but but let me ask. So, I I mean, you were 17. You started a business, and you started a clothing business back then, right? Yeah. Could yeah, could good. you do that again in this current I, market? I, I definitely, uh, it would be different. It would look a yeah. lot different, right? But I definitely would could do it. I think there's more resources to be able to do that, right? Like yeah. we we needed brick and mortar. Um, and what, what would you do differently if you had to do it over again in this current market? You're, you're 17, well, you're in high school and you're, and you're it, uh, you. Yeah. So, so I would definitely uh, use the network. I mean, young people are, are, are amazing at building their network and mm-hmm. using social media. So those are assets, you know, people don't really talk about, you know, when a young person is engaged in TikTok or uh, Instagram or YouTube, you know, like when they're doing these things, they're building digital assets. People don't look at it, look at um, a social media account as a digital asset. What I see is that you have access to people, 
And when you have access to people, this is now your network. Now, most people choose to just, you know, throw up memes, cool little TikTok dances, but then there's people that can sell to those people. You know, those people can be converted into your customer. They already know you, they like you, they follow you. And so now more than ever, it's getting easier for, for young, younger people to be entrepreneurial. And so if I were to, if I was starting today, if I was 17 years old today, I would jump on social media, Instagram, TikTok, and I would, I would be selling products. Yeah. What what would you sell? (laughs) Um, Well, I would, I would probably sell. You'd uh, sell sunglasses and cologne, wouldn't you? (laughs) I would probably sell other people's products. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because in my day and age, you had to source out the product. You had to ha- physically have it in your hand. And then you had to go find yourself a customer to sell that product to. Right. Now, you don't even need to source out the product. There's other people that can source out the product. There's other yeah. people that can do their research. There's other people that can do you know, research and development and create the product. So you can now use the, your asset, your digital asset, which is the audience that you have, and simply connect the two where you're the, 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 the manufacturer can actually send the product directly to your customer. So you don't even have to own the product. And that's what I would, that's what I would do uh, if I was starting right now at 17. Okay. I have a funny story to tell you. I, I was uh, now, now that we've opened up a little bit in summertime, you can actually go outside and be around people semi. Um, I, I was, uh, I overheard this conversation and, uh, I think uh, the the girl was talking to her boyfriend and she was with a friend. So two teenage girls and one of them's talking to her boyfriend. And the boyfriend says that he wants to start. Uh, and I, I actually thought of you. It, it's funny. He wanted to start a clothing business because he wants to uh, he wants to have stores all over the place. And and the two teenage girls were talking about wanting to start. A clothing business, but they wanted to do everything online. And so it's part of the reason that you could hear them because they were having this argument. And, uh, but this, this boyfriend was adamant about, he wanted to have these clothing stores. And, uh, and I thought of you, what, what would you say to something like that? I, I would say, I would say that, you know, there's no limit to what someone could do. Right. Yeah. Uh, so i I was fortunate enough to, you know, you know, I was born in the seventies. Um, I was a child during the eighties and then, um, then, you know, I was a teenager during the nineties. Right. Yeah. In my view, it's like, it couldn't have been planned better than that. Right. Like I think I, I grew up and everybody's, every generation is going to probably think the same thing about how they were like when they were born or whatnot. But I, I love it because I was there for the birth of hip hop, you know, yes. and I was so passionate about um, hip hop that uh, ultimately what led me to fashion was the fact that, you know what, uh, the only, there's only certain things that you could do. I mean, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a good rapper. <laughs> I tried, you know. Uh, we all tried. We all tried. <laughs> you know, uh, I just wasn't agile enough to be a break dancer, you know. And so there's only a few things that I, I that I could do. I wasn't a beatboxer, you know. <laughs> it didn't it didn't work out, you know. It cuts. But beats, uh, beats. <laughs> but what I what I saw was um, an opening in the fashion industry, right? Everybody and their grandmother said it's not going to work. Hip hop is a fad. Uh, people don't shop in when I, where I started Ottawa, people don't shop in Ottawa. There's no market. Um, you know, all of these, all of the things. Right. And, and I'm like that, those are the reasons why I I should open. Right. And so when you hear someone like that, he wants to have a a physical location in a world where there is no physical, the, the, that physical location, uh, is kind of, uh, passe, you know, who am I to say that it's, it is or it isn't, right? Maybe he can create an experience because that's what the world needs today. I don't, I don't know what, where his mind is at. I definitely wouldn't discourage it, 
right? I would say mm-hmm. look into it more. It, but and I would say it's got to be an experience, right? Like behind you, you have some. Uh, I don't know if you drew these or um, you know where these paintings came from. Were these yours? These, these yeah, no, these are um, these are uh, finds. Uh, I love finding uh, paintings that other people, uh, you know, garage sales and things yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 So, so the, those paintings, right. Uh, you could easily bought those online. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you went out to a garage sale to find, like, it was like a yeah. adventure. It's a journey. Right. Yeah. It's- Mind you, it was also before COVID. So, <laughs> so I think we can't get pigeonholed in one way of doing something that stops creativity. So to the young man in the restaurant, uh, if he wants to open his store, do it. And what happens is you start getting better, whatever it is, that, whatever, whatever the journey is, the second you start, you learn from it and then you start getting better. And then eventually it's either going to work out or it's not. Maybe they move the, the business to on, uh, online. Who knows? But the point is he started, he has that experience and then now he's moving forward. Twitter was not was not a social media app when it started. Twitter actually was a way to interact for gamers. Gamers used to get on online and they would just have small uh, little messages to one another, right? They could send little messages to one another. That's the that's how Twitter Twitter started. Later it became a social media uh, app. And so you you know we don't know like you know we don't we have no clue on where the journey is going to take someone. The point is, they should start. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. That, that's a great point because I I have to confess that when I heard that, I thought, oh, man, she needs to dump that guy because he's a dud. Um, if he hasn't figured out that stores are uh, gone the way of the dinosaur. Um, but I, I love what you've actually created instead because, yeah, you're going to go try something and you're going to fail at it. And but maybe he hits on something amazing in that process. Maybe it's a, it's an experience where you're like, you know, for us, the barbershop and you've got the music playing in the background. And, um, and so you come in and, and it's a great feel and people want that experience because everybody else goes, goes and buys online. And so maybe he's able to create that or maybe not, but he gets the, he, instead of failing, he gets the lesson. Uh, out of it and so i that that's a really good way to look at it and i appreciate that because obviously i've got teenagers so that that's important for me to to pick up and uh okay so you know what what do you what do you advise uh for people that are getting started where do where do you suggest do you suggest that they try out uh you know clothing businesses or drop shipping or all this kind of stuff i i know that yeah. obviously real estate is near and dear to your heart but uh where do you tell uh, a young person to get started so first of all i i really encourage young people to develop the skills right okay. um that's what the what, the, what, what do you mean by that with the develop so, the skills so the, so the quadra youth foundation um was created before covid right and the idea, the idea for the, the foundation was that, you know, we would go uh, and, you know, teach uh, skill sets uh, to young people that could better serve them in, in the future. So mm-hmm. entrepreneurial skits, skill sets, leadership, um, sales, right? Learning how to sell, communicate, public speaking. I, I consider this to be public speaking, right? So the, the, the ability to get, get, in front of a, a camera or, or a group of people and be able to share your mind and, or put together your thoughts in a way that the, the, the audience understands and can take action. Right. These are all. Do, amazing do people, re- do the two kids really need to be able to sell these days? I mean, with everything online and I think, clickable? That, I think because there's so much online, you need ways of dif- differentiating yourself between what you're doing and everybody else, right? And that 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 the difference is going to be the skill sets, right? Uh, you can promote something, you can market, and sure you'll get you'll get sales, but nothing is nothing as powerful as getting on a podcast, 
having a conversation and telling people, my key is the best key that there is. Look what this does, right? Portable, unique, one of a kind, and now in limited quantities. The link is below. You know, uh, you can. We have three different colors: red, blue, and yellow, right? I mean, th this is that. It's something as simple as that. A simple demonstration that already differentiates you. Be, uh, between you and everybody else. And mm -hmm. so those are skill sets that are that should be developed in, in, in young people that are not even talked about mm. today. They're not even talked about. And so um, along with that, try businesses, you know, try the the try the the garage sales. Uh, so, you know, try the the, the online uh, Shopify store, uh, try the 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 turning your inner Instagram into um, into a, a, a like a money machine right and all of the people that you know think about what do they need and what would they buy right think about where you could get that that product or service or whatever it is and see mm -hmm. how you can leverage the people that you, that are in your Instagram or your, your, or your, I know young people don't even have Facebook, but Instagram or uh, TikTok, TikTok or uh, TikTok or Snapchat and see if you can turn it into a, a moneymaker, a, a business, right? Just out of curiosity, do you think uh, Facebook has uh, gone the way of the dinosaur as well? Well, I think there's just different, there's a, there's a different audience for it, right? Mm. Everything has a different audience. Uh, I think Facebook is there to stay, uh, just like LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn has a different audience than a Facebook audience. Maybe it's the same audience, but the the way they show up there is in a very different way. Yeah. So there's, I think there's room for everybody to survive, just like electricity. You know, <laughs> like like there's lots of different ways to get it <laughs> yeah you can get oil like i mean you can coal uh, who knows like, like i mean at the end of the day you need electricity right yeah i think social media is uh it's something that is here to stay i think it will evolve and it'll be more interactive as as uh as the years go um but yet yeah, I, I think it's here to stay so if, if you started over if you had to start over again um would you would you do uh, real estate again? Absolutely, I would do it earlier and more of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you say more about that? Yeah, well, I, I would. You know, the, there's a misconception that um, you have to wait until you're older to be able to transact in and create wealth, mm. and uh, that's a misconce mis misconception. And <clears throat> I think. Um, if, if young, if young people, if young people can, you know, jump online and start getting educated, getting the books, having that information, um, they could start a lot younger, uh, acquiring assets. Yeah. And I would, I mean, my first, I bought my first property when I was 21. I didn't really know why I was doing it. It wasn't to create wealth. I, I bought it from a consumer perspective. But uh, at least I, I, I did I did it right. I, I had a property and I had, it was a house and it, it was it was great. Um, but then years later, I sold that property and I had more money in my hands than when I started than how than what I put into it. And so then I I realized that real estate is an appreciating asset. You know the the shoes, the jewelry, all the consumer products that are out there uh, lose value like a, like a vehicle. But real estate generally, historically, goes up in value and it appreciates. And so if you can find a way as a young person to hustle your way into a property um, where you could, you know, buy uh, a bungalow or uh, a duplex 
a bungalow, turn it into a duplex. You're renting the bottom, then you're renting all the rooms, and uh, you become, you know, you you you're in, a, you, in in essence you you've house hacked. Um, I think that that's a really great move for a young person to do, right? Mm. At, you know, at a 20 or 21 years old to get into a piece of real estate. Well, well, here's the, the thing that I would say to that Two two things. First of all, when you're 20, 21, when you're younger, you're, you're asking yourself a couple of questions. One is how do I make some money now? <laughs> and, uh, and if you wanted to get into real estate, good luck. How in the world are they supposed to do that? Qualify for a mortgage, any of that. You've got grown people with, uh, you know, full salaries, two salaries, and they can't qualify for a mortgage. How in the world is some someone 2021 20, supposed to be able to do that? Yeah. So you, you got to what I what I what I tell everybody, find a way. Right. Yeah. Uh, you have to find a way. You, you, yeah. It, just because, you know, people tell you you can't or or they couldn't. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, figure out, you know, find yourself someone that could qualify, um, you know, do a joint venture with someone that has a bit of money. Um, the thing about being young, which a lot of people, you know, when you are when you when you are young yourself, you always look at uh, being young as um as a reason why you wouldn't get ahead or people won't take you right. seriously. Right. It's detrimental. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's the opposite, right? Like as a young person, I remember like my friends around me, you know, like I would, I, I was able to um, inspire people around me to uh, work for the movement. Right. And it's like, you, when you have a group of young people and then the one person can lead the way, you know, a lot of other people just jump on board, right? Because they're like, okay, this seems like this guy knows where he's going. And so, you know, I remember even with my first business, I had friends that would come and work just to have, just be around work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, they would come and help me build the store and do a lot of things. And, you know, no one's asking for money. We didn't have any money. You know, and so I could get away with that when I was 19, 20. I can't get away with that now. You know, anybody that, that comes around, that everybody wants to get paid, right? I'm a, I'm a grown ass man, right? No one's gonna say, okay, we're gonna work for the for the to be, you know, for the vision. You know, people want to get paid. Um, also, when you're young, older people um, sometimes want to root for you. Right. They, 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 they're they're going to go above and beyond uh, to make sure that the, you get that opportunity. And mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. You know. I remember being 23 years old. Sitting at the kitchen table with a older gentleman and his wife. And the objective of that meeting was I was going to buy their property. OK. OK. And. I was 23, 24 years old. And I just, I went like verbal diarrhea on the guy. Like I told him where I had been, like my entire story, how I was homeless at one time. Then I became a young father, changed my life and, you know, started a business. Um, unfortunately, the, 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 the economy was not working. I almost, you know, I almost went bankrupt, but didn't. But now I'm rebuilding and bigger and better. And my vision is to, you know, create um, wealth through real estate. Right. And he's like, whoa, young man, you're, you're how old are you? 23. I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, 23. He's like, whoa, you remind me of myself. And 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 he and you know what he said to me? I wish my son was like you. That's what he said to me. And so he was, uh, he, you know, I was able to create a transaction a creative transaction where I had seller financing, full support with guidance and mentorship from this guy that didn't even know me, right? But he was just impressed that I was a young man fighting and trying to make something happen. That's a luxury that I don't have today. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no one's going to give me a, 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 a shot, you know, like I'm a grown ass man. You know what I mean? Like get your own shot, you know? So uh, those are some of the things that I think uh, there are a huge advantage of youth and time. This is what I, this is what I would say to a young person. Go for it. Re you can go high risk, high reward now as a young person versus me. I can't go. I can't go extremely high risk. You know what I mean? It's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but I got a mortgage. I got kids. I, I got, you know, I got responsibilities. When you're 20 years old, you can fail. Like that is, that is one of the biggest benefits to being young. You have, you can fail, get up, fail again. You can take extreme risks and the, the consequences are not as harsh as when you are, old with mortgage married kids car payments all that stuff right yeah yeah well you, you know it's interesting at that same period that you were talking about when you were young and starting a business and that i i remember i was in a gang at the time and um you, you know very very close to uh becoming a drug dealer quite quite honestly that was uh, i remember that there was no one that could teach you or that was going to teach us about how to make money in real estate. Um, you know, at that time we didn't, you know, you were like, I don't know, what are, what are we going to do? And we want to, we know we want to make money, but uh, we just didn't have any idea of how that would actually take place. And most of the jobs that were around uh, at, at that point in time, you just thought, well, I don't know how to get that job or what, you know, because no one in my family had ever done anything like that, you know, coming over as, as immigrants. Um, and it, you know, luckily that I didn't go down that road, but, uh, but in terms of high risk, absolutely. But you, you went through some interesting times. Did you ever get wrapped up into any of those things in, into uh, being in a gang or any of that kind of stuff yeah. when, when yeah. you were younger? Uh, well, absolutely. Like, the thing about uh, growing up in the inner city, in the inner city, and being an immigrant specifically, yeah, because uh, I can only speak to that experience, right? So you, you come into this country, and you you don't really fit in, right? You you don't really fit in, and what happens is, is uh, you tend to gravitate towards the people that are just like you, right? Um, I remember like I, my mom couldn't afford hockey, right? Like uh, my mom couldn't afford uh, like sports and, you know, I, we would only play basketball. You know what I mean? Cause so one person has to have a basketball. We don't need all equipment. You know what I mean? So we played basketball and, and, and soccer and it, you know, my experience was uh, it tended to be a lot of immigrant uh, people right that would play mm -hmm. the sports and then what happens you start building building these bonds and <clears throat> because we we come here and we leave our our you know our families back home you know and now these uh these group of kids now become the new family right this mm -hmm. is like and i remember like i remember being 15 years old i'm gonna i would die for you man you know <laughs> And that was the that was the the attitude that we would have back then because it's yeah. like you stick together, right? Um, the problem was that I didn't understand, and this is what we we teach people, young people um, in um, in in the um, foundation, is that if you show me your friends, I'm going to show you your future, right? And what happens is there was those kids that were taking that path, the good path. I remember there was kids in my community that were on that good path. But for, what, for, for whatever reason, that didn't seem appealing to me, right? It's like someone that's studious, someone that goes to school. And then there was these other kids that would hang out at the basketball court. And that was more attractive to me at 14 years old because you know it was it was like an easier path right and in my mind is like okay like you know if we all get together we're stronger we can do more things and in essence those were the key things of 
running a company, right? You get, you get people together, you, be, you become yeah. a leader. And so uh, I just think there was like, we go back to the, what I was saying before, there's no alternative path to mm. someone that wants to have a dip, a different journey than just going down the studious journey of going to university, oh. getting a job after, I, you know? Absolutely. Like I, I remember for us, it was, okay, there's this group over here. They've already got money. And, uh, and so their parents have got uh, houses, cars, whatever we didn't, you know, we're living in these, uh, these apartment buildings that weren't really well taken care of. We didn't have a basketball hoop. We used to paint a square on the, uh, on the wall side of a wall. So you'd shot, you'd shoot at the, at that. Anyways, um, that was, that was ghetto anyways. Um, but I remember what you're talking about here in the sense that we thought everybody's against us, right? We can't, how in the world are we going to do that? Right. So we banded together and, and I like what you said about show me your friends and sh I'll show you your future because we only had each other and, and none of us knew anything beyond that. Yeah. And so Hence the reason the greatest idea that we could come up with amongst ourselves was, hey, let's take over the local drug scene. Yeah. Yeah. But if someone would have come along and said, listen, guys, you guys have really good skill sets that can that can transfer into uh, business. Right. And this, you, you know, this is how you do it. This is how you, you know, this is how you would sell a product. This is how you market a product. This is how you market yourself. This is how you communicate. You know, a lot of the times people make bad decisions because they lack confidence. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have trusted you if you came around and said, oh, here's what you need to do. We'd be like, who's this guy? He, yeah, you know, yeah, trying to exactly. tell us well, you, what the, he's trying you know, to you take it, from you, us. You have to. That path is not. It's it, there is no path. Right. So it's just like you can't have one person just jump in and just say, hey, this is where I'm going to take you. You start by giving people the comp, the, the, the skill set. Right. The sales, the marketing, communication, public speaking. When I was on the streets, I had no confidence in myself. Zero. Zero. I had zero confidence in myself. I thought I was going to die by the time I was 20, you know? And if someone would have came and give me some basic skills, then I would have gained confidence over myself. And then what happens is you build self-respect. Right. Mm -hmm. Confidence helps you build self-respect and you make better de decisions because you know that there's a future. You have a future. But when you think you have no future, when you think there's no way, when you when there is no confidence where where um, everybody, everybody has said you're not going to amount to anything. You know, this is what happens this is what people end up in a in a in the criminal life for forever. Right. You somewhere along the line, you gain confidence over yourself. You were able to articulate your 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 thoughts. People uh, obviously respect you. And so that changed your perspective and changed your life, changed your, your surroundings, changed the people and ultimately changed your future. Mm -hmm. And so the someone that is, you know, at risk. You know, and I say that with quotation marks because I believe that all young people right now are at risk. But, you know, the, the quote unquote uh, at risk youth, these people, sh these young people, all they need is to build self-confidence, self-worth, self-respect. And you would see that that lane, those people are the CEOs the creators of products, uh, you know, people that are going to solve problems in our world because they did not fit the regular path that everybody's on. I, th I think one of the things that is a struggle right now is that everything comes so quickly. And even, I mean, even social media, you can get likes so easily. You can get uh, follows, all of this kind of stuff that uh, maybe 
maybe they're not getting some of the lessons that are available to them. How do you make that transition? How would someone make that transition now to be able to say, you, you and I have the benefit of hindsight. I mean, I have the benefit of almost uh, dying in a gang fight, but so that, that was a, a rude awakening to, Hey, you need to make a change, but. And, and or, I had, I had my, you know, my life changing moment where I became a father. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But so, we don't want to, it's not like we're want to encourage young people to yeah. get in gang fights or, and become teenage parents, you know? So, yeah. So how do they have, how does a young person have make that transition right to, to go from, I, I feel like to some degree, okay, great. We got, we got older. And so we have to start thinking differently, or in our cases, we had life-changing moments, uh, which caused us to start thinking about it earlier. But what do you say to someone that's going, why would I do that? I'm, I'm having a good time. I wouldn't. Okay. Well, this is, this is something that uh, I believe uh, to the core of my being. Okay. The second you find a purpose, you you're on your way right if you can find a a purpose in, in the goal you can have any goal but if you have a reason why you need to achieve that goal you become unstoppable right the problem with that is when you when you say it out loud it does sound cliche right it sounds like yeah find a purpose find a why like you, go get yourself a purpose yeah, you got to you find know, a it, purpose in life and so um I think for young people, and, and we're talking, if we're going to talk about young people that are specifically uh, um, the, that are not on that traditional path, right? Because mm-hmm. you have young people that are on that traditional path, and maybe they don't want to be there, but they don't see any other, uh, there's no other alternatives, but they're there, right? So you, you know, it's safe to say that they're going to be there for, for a very long time. But if we're talking about specifically the people that are off that path, that are, uh, you know, are into tr- got into trouble or they, they, you know, for whatever reason, school doesn't jive with them or whatnot. I would say those skills, those, those young people need to develop skills first, you know, specific skills that are going to talk to their, um, their strengths, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everybody has got some skill in something, right? Whether you can draw, you, you're creative, or, you know, there's something. Let's find that, whatever that is, and let's focus on that and, and make sure that you become the best at whatever that is, right? Yeah. At the same time, we're going to sprinkle it with some public speaking, some, you know, getting out there, learning how to sell, learning how to start a business. I think if you can, if you can, put a young person on that path, eventually they're going to find something that really resonates with them and they will find a purpose. They, mm-hmm. they, they will find a purpose within whatever it is that they're, they're doing. But it's hard to say to someone, Hey, you got to get a, you know, if you have a why, you know, you're going to be unstoppable because hard for someone to fathom having a, 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 a kid. And we're not saying you need to have a kid. We're saying the second you find your purpose in life, you're on the right path. You're on the right journey for your entire life. But to get to that point, I think it's confidence, self-worth, self-respect first. And you have to build the, the skill sets, right? You have to build the skill set. You have to get educated in, in the right way, right? And, you know, educated with business, real estate, whatever, whatever it is that's going to resonate with that young person. And I'm going to say more entrepreneurial things would resonate with someone that, you know, they don't feel that they fit in that traditional path. Wow, that that's actually a really interesting point. I, I, I actually feel that a lot of people are afraid to tell uh, to tell someone that, look, it's all right to fail. It's OK for you to fail. It's OK for you to be confused. It's OK for you not to know what to do next. Go do something anyways. Yeah. And and I think what you're talking about here with regards to getting the skills, I, I've noticed that you've not said go take this job. You've said 
get these skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think for you, that's the result in the job in the job. (laughs) The job, the business, like the skill, I think the skills builds the confidence. Right. And the confidence is what you need in order to be on the right track. Because if there is no confidence, especially in this day and age, you know, where where things are moving so fast and some young people are being left behind, um, you'll find that, you know, and I don't know this for sure, okay? So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm making an assumption here. I want to be clear that I'm making an assumption here. But um, in hindsight, when you look back, you will see suicide rates have gone, will probably have gone up, right? I'm making an assumption. I don't know that for sure. I don't have any statistics. And the reason I think I, I, I believe that is because um, a lot of young people are being left behind. The, the skills that they're being taught in the traditional path are no longer um, they're, they're, they're not um, they're not helping young people with building con- the confidence that they need. And so when you have low confidence, low self-worth, low self-respect, and then you have social media and people cyberbullying and all that, I think um, you'll have some really depressed young people that, you know, it, it, the result of that, obviously, it's either like, you know, you're, you get on drugs or you go down the wrong path or you end up, uh, you know, having suicidal thoughts. And this is something that we should look at. Again, these are assumptions that I'm making, but um, I think the conf- it, is, it starts with building a young person, person's confidence. And the way you do that is through skills, like public speaking. If you can get up in front of a group of people, you don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the smartest. But if you can get up in front of a group of people, in front of a camera, in front of an audience and speak your mind, your market value in the world goes up, right? And that builds confidence. And with that type of confidence, you can do anything. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's a powerful message that needs to be put out there. Build those skills that creates confidence and conf- with confidence, you can achieve anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really surprised that um, they don't teach public speaking uh, starting in, in elementary school, right? Like it needs to be a course, right? And it should be like an ongoing course for the rest of your life, you know? Um, well, I, you know what, I've, I've got kids in school and one of the things that, well, obviously not in school right now, but uh, one of the things that you'll remember that, that we used to do is you'd have to go to the front of the class and you would have to do some public speaking, maybe read your story or the, depending as the grades went on, present something. And what I've seen now is that you can opt out of these things. You can actually say that, you know, you don't want to do that or you just want to hand in the report uh, because we don't want to put the children on the spot because it's very traumatizing. I think um, there's two parts to that. Right. So there's in that in that uh, course where you would learn how to public speak, there should be how to be a proper audience member. Mm. Right. And so because we're not teaching people how to listen, right? So, so at, at the same time as you're teaching someone how to talk, the audience has to be able to listen and be respectful of the person that's talking. And so what happens now, there's the kids are maybe being silly or they're laughing and they're, they're, they're you know, they're maybe embarrassing the person that's, that's up front. And so... That is, it go, it's two ways how you would teach that class, right? Uh, okay, I think you just dropped a bomb. I'm not sure. Hang on a second here. So we, we, we tell people to listen. We yeah. don't ever actually teach them how to listen. No, no. I, I feel like there's something there. 
Holy <laughs> crow. Hang on. A, like we, we tell our kids even, Hey, you got to listen. Yeah. But I don't know that we ever teach them how to listen because I, I'm sure like, like, as I'm sitting here, I'm listening for the gold in what you're sharing. Right. Um, and, and I think one of the things that I love about listening to people is listening for their experiences, lear- listening for the learning in behind the, the tenacity, the, the mental shift that they had to have all, all of these different things, all part of the listening. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to, just listening for the sake of listening uh, because I'm supposed to be there. Yeah. Which, which I think is probably something that gets taught more often um, as opposed to yeah, and just, just sit there, just sit there. You know, you got to listen, you got to listen to me as opposed to uh, active listening or something like that. Uh, I think that's something you just taught. What, do you have anything to say about uh, listening, learning to listen? Yeah. The, that's some, most powerful skill that you could ever have is learning to listen. This is why we have two, two ears and one mouth. We're supposed to listen twice as much as we, as we, as we speak. And in school, um, there's no, we, we don't teach young people. This is why they would opt out. Right. So going back to what you were saying before, why would a young person, opt out and why would you take away that experience from from someone why would you let them opt out uh well first of all you don't want them to, you don't want them to be embarrassed right and you know that someone's confidence can be shattered if a group of kids in the audience is laughing and being disrespectful when someone's speaking and so you have to teach that to the young people just as much as you're teaching it to the, the person getting up, listen, you're going to get up there and, the, and everybody's going to listen, right? Um, even if you stand there and say nothing, you still stood there, right? Say two words, to say one word. It's an accomplishment, right? And the next time they're going to go and say three words or four words, but it needs to be an ongoing process. So by the time they get to high school, this is a real skill set that they've developed right Mm -hmm. and that builds confidence that builds confidence everything will change once you have the ability to communicate and the 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 best way to communicate is to learn how to listen right like if you learn how to listen to people you can communicate and structure what you're saying based on what they need or want or want to hear and so Listening and speaking is it goes hand in hand, but it's not even talked about in school. It's not even a, a priority. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that um, as I'm hearing you say that, you talked about that mentor that you had when you were young and he was so impressed with you and he agreed to start teaching you and you would have had to actively listen to him you had to take on that role and to be able to learn and and grow from that point and um is, is he still a mentor of yours now uh no i think uh, I, I lost i lost touch with him but yeah. um i think he's passed now this is yeah. we're talking about over 20 years ago <laughs> yeah yeah well we'll have many mentors in our lives over the years right Um, as you go through different seasons, as you, as you learn certain things, then move on to the next. And, um, I think that's, uh, that's just part of how, how it goes. Right. And so, wow. Um, I, I think there, there's a lot there just about collecting skills and, uh, and learning the power of public speaking and active listening, uh, and learning, learning how to be a good listener just as much as being a good speaker yeah. and uh, that, that that's powerful. Um, is there, is there anything else that, uh, you know, you would, you would kind of say to, to uh, your younger self now as you know, if you wanted them to, you wanted to pass that on to them, that yourself when you were younger, uh, if, you would say? if I was, uh, if I could go back and, and, uh, and, uh, talk to my 16 year old self, 17 year old self, 17 year old self. 
I would, I would definitely um, say that it's going to work out, mm -hmm. you know, and the time that you are going to spend worrying about things, it's not time well spent. That's what I would say to myself. Wow. Don't worry. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. Wow. Alfonso, <laughs> as, as always, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to speak with you. To, there's still people to on, on, on my live. I, I forgot. I forgot that I was on this live, but there's still people <laughs> on my live here. To, to whether it's playing golf or uh, watching you uh, do that eagle. If, if people want to get a hold of you, um, how do they do that? Well, you know what? Go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, free content. Um, and I, I just want to, I, I just want to share with the world. I think this conversation and the way this podcast was, uh, I guess the flow of the podcast, uh, you know, this conversation that we just had, I think it can help a lot of people because it's, it's very organic and, and uh, it's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, we ac actually have uh, Dave Shapiro here. He's, he's been learning. <laughs> nice. nice. So love that's it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, I, I love the, the it's, it's very, it, it's, it's a conversation that a lot of young people need to listen to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, I think for you and I, and part of the synergy, you know, the planning behind this is that we've, we've both been there yeah, and we know the power in passing, you know, knowledge on, and, and we know the, uh, you know, the mind, the minefields that we, uh, we had to avoid to yeah. get to be who we are now. And so, uh, Alfonso, thank you so much for coming on the show today and, uh, for sharing your experiences, your insights. And, uh, I know if people want to, uh, if they want to learn more about real estate investing, they want to Subscribe learn more to my about channel mindset. or find me on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> This is your host, Neil D'Souza, Leadership for Wealth to Wealth podcast. And uh, in the words of the great Alfonso Quadra, we'll see you at the top. <laughs>